whatever. Yuck, hello, whatever. What is it? 2 and the 18. Let us go to the Twitch page and look at my channel. And once we have looked at my channel, just to see if everything is streaming, if you can hear me. All right, do we have any bots in the chat? Nightbot is listed as uh, Barsky. But Nightbot isn't paying attention. Fuck you, Nightbot. Being such a bitch. Um, this is a very, very stupid idea. It is very stupid. I should, I think, I should, I think, let's see. Let's just throw everything. Why not? Why? Why is that happening? Okay, technical difficulties. I don't... Farts... What the fuck? It doesn't make any sense. Why is it selecting the whole fucking thing? There's no reason for that. Whatevs. I'll just do this. Good. This is a very stupid idea. Didn't even really want to do it, but I felt like I had to. But we'll see how it goes. I need the idea here, and I don't think I'm going to be able to execute it the way I want to, but the idea is two women going through a transporter, and it's, it's actually one woman that is being split into two different women, the two very distinct different personalities and it's all for a gag let's let's do her first because I wrote some stupid shit and I just felt like this this needs a picture to accompany it Let's start with that. Um, right now I am looking at reference photos. Alt Shift M. But some of them have boobies. And Twitch doesn't like boobies in certain contexts in a certain context, so I'm going to try to not show that. Um, eh. Rolling the tongues and gunning. That is kind of what I'm going for.
Oh, this is going to be... This is going to take some winging. I'm going to do some winging, winging, winging of this. Which I normally don't like to do. Let's... Shit, do I have a good face? I don't know. I still haven't figured out what is wrong with Nightbot and how to make it work again. I don't think of it until I'm actually streaming, so... Whatever. I really... Let's... Way down. Is this I'll put a question mark on that? But not there. That's not where I wanted that. There we go. Mysterious machinations. So what can we do here? Come on. Here we go. What the fart? Why is that happening? There we go. I'll get drawing soon enough. Okay, get off my butt. What is happening here? Mm. Don't worry about that too much. So let's... Mm. That not really. Well, yes, really. Uh, I don't like this head being so far apart from this head, but I think I can adjust. I think I can fix it. I did the other day. Kind of a slightly different than I usually do. Kind of rough. And it seemed to work out okay. So let's try that. Just making everything just circles and tubes and shit. I don't think we're going to see her hands. Because that would just... Bring the, burp, 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 burp. the line way up here, and there's no reason for that. What? Uh, just want to get rid of that, maybe? Let's just get rid of that. Talking about your pants, rolling the Thompson gunner. Alright, right now, this is very mannish. No. Think. Let's see. 
Yeah, I'm just going to draw these two ladies individually. And then just hopefully it won't work that I can meld them together in some fashion. I don't know why I just had this image. What the fuck? Why won't you? Why did that happen? That's weird. Don't know why that happened. Everything's weird. Let's try this again. There we go. So, lady on the left. I have to be very, very expressive. Oh, shit. Let's see what happened. I forgot. To switch the color back. to be very very expressive very happy not just happy just like ecstatic oh hello doctor dr d nice to see you i'm doing another completely random heart stream i was trying to draw a lady yesterday, the day before, and I just could not get the nose to look okay. I drew it like five times. It just still sucked. Sometimes it just noses just look so weird. This is not. This is going to take some effort. But this is just the rough circles. Just get rid of it. Just start over. Anyway, I don't know if you're, you probably weren't here when I just started up, but this is just a really, really, really dumb idea that I had that I didn't even want to draw, but. I'm not doing anything else. I might as well give it a shot. And it's uh, two women who have, well, technically it's one woman who was in a teleporter accident and being split into two women. And it's just, a very silly gag that I wrote about. And I just kind of felt, well, I really need to do this picture. I can't just leave this paragraph. Whatever this is. But I can tell you the whole thing. If you would like, I uh, was just writing about movies and I watched Leaving Las Vegas, which is a movie. What's the writing for? I just write stupid shit about movies. If you've seen my Instagram, you, you know what I'm talking about. I just make write silly shit about movies all the time can't stop myself and this was just I haven't posted this yet because I wanted to do the picture and uh, let's see you anyway
sometimes I just, I really go all out. I just think something's really funny and I just roll with it. So this, I watched the movie Leaving Las Vegas, which if you're not familiar, it's a movie that stars Nicolas Cage and Elizabeth Shue, and Nicolas Cage loses his job and decides he's an alcoholic that loses his job, so he decides to just go to Las Vegas and spend every cent he has drinking himself to death. Uh, and Elizabeth Shue plays a sex worker that doesn't fall in love with him, but she's just kind of attaches herself to Nicolas Cage. Frizzy hair. And uh, just sort of accompanies him on his journey to drink himself to death. And let's see. Here's what we got going on here. I just don't know how to do pretty girls. I just, but this is early on. I can fix this. I can make this look okay. But anyway, yeah. So that's leaving Las Vegas in a nutshell. And I was stricken by... I feel like Elizabeth Shue earlier in her career in... Leaving Las Vegas and Adventures in Babysitting and other things I'm sure that she was in. It was just not good as an actress. I did not care for her. And I think the issue that I had was she was just devoid of emotion. She just say, would say everything flat not a whole lot of expression, just very poker facey. Just, uh, and she was nominated for an Academy Award for that role, which kind of, I think that was my first inkling that the Academy Awards and the Oscars were bullshit when she was nominated for that because it's just such an uninspiring performance. And Nicolas Cage is super duper wacky, but it fits the character. It's one of his few roles where him just being absolutely bonkers, Nicolas Cage actually works because it fits the role of just this alcoholic guy just descending into Death? Descending into death, maybe? I don't know. Anyway. But she is not nearly happy enough. Like, not even remotely happy enough. But we can work on that. So anyway, yeah. Leaving Las Vegas. I watched that movie, Elizabeth Shue. So deadpan. So devoid of emotion. And it got me thinking of another movie also released in 1995 also set in las vegas called showgirls starring elizabeth berkeley most notably known for her role in saved by the bell all right let's bring those eyebrows up and in that she's pretty terrible in that movie as an actress but whereas Elizabeth Shue is, see, this is so convoluted, <laughs> me explaining it even. Elizabeth Shue is just flat and emotionless and deadpan. Elizabeth Berkeley is just all over the map as far as she's angry, she's excited. She's very, very manic in her role. And it just occurred to me that it really felt like there was one actress 
probably named Elizabeth. And two parts of her personality had been split up. One of which just got all the crazy manic emotions. Let's get that eyebrow. And the other one, having its emotions ripped away, just had no feeling at all. And no ability to explain emotions. And so I just wrote this thing about this teleporter accident that happened to an actress named Elizabeth that split into two and Elizabeth Berkeley was crazy with emotion, no discipline whatsoever. And she starred in showgirls and then Elizabeth shoe, very deadpan, not a whole lot of expression. She went on to star in leaving Las Vegas. So that's the whole bit. That's, what the writing was and I just felt like this is so I love it but it's so stupid it's so specific even though I think it's hilarious probably nobody else is going to nobody else is going to get it I'm having such a hard time with this thing. It's, good. it's okay but it just I need to try to come up with the visual to accompany this because the words themselves, I think, even though I think it's funny, the mitochondrial Elizabeth. There we go. What was, what was that? Like Parasite Eve? Where all the crazy shit was happening because of mitochondria growing big or something like that? Anyway, but yeah, so... I don't know. It just really felt like this needs a visual. So I'm trying to draw it. If it blows. Basically the biggest issue I have with not wanting to draw it is it just, it's complicated and I don't know if I can pull it off. She has a little more expression here. It doesn't look like a woman and their neck is all weird and funky, but anyway, it does happen in Parasite Eve. Okay. I think I've, I only played the second one, but yeah, I remember some sort of anime or video game or something where the explanation for crazy monsters was something, something mitochondria. So. Anyway, something I think is goddamn hilarious. I don't know if anybody else is going to think it's funny or is going to get it. And it's so very specific to two movies from 1995 that probably not a whole lot of people have even seen, at least not today. Or if they have seen it, they probably saw it in the 90s. So I thought, I just want to draw... A picture that stands alone of a woman being split into two women. My favorite you have to do in that game is you have to destroy the sperm in a sperm bank. <laughs> was that the one? I can't remember if it was that or maybe it was Dino Crisis or maybe it was something else. Where this, this big bloated creature that is being fed into its brain, just joy, its pleasure centers are just being flooded and it can't move. And it's, I don't remember why it like manufactures something or the creature has some power or some goddamn thing. And the protagonist blows it up or kills it or shuts down whatever is giving it all the joy and the protagonist just despises this thing and it is just revolted uh, by it just letting itself get to that point of being so fat only living for joy and I just really felt like well who the hell 
if you can just sit there and have happiness pumped into your brain, who's going to say no? Why wouldn't you do that? And even if you wouldn't, I'm, I'm sympathetic to it. Was that Dino Crisis? It was one of those Resident Evil, post-Resident Evil games. All right, this, whoops. It gets the point across. Doesn't look like a woman, doesn't look anything like Elizabeth Berkeley. But it's the direction and angle that I want. Now, let's, let's do this. Cut and paste. This I don't need. Let's see, yesterday, last night, I went to another open mic. And this one was mostly music. How do I fix this? And it was fine. But everybody got about 15 minutes on stage, and I felt like maybe, maybe they should have had 10 minutes. But some of it was fine. Some of it was really bad. But I still respect the people who do it. Even if they are less than stellar at it. Man, I just want to completely do this over. So I guess that's what I'm doing. But there were a few people who pretty much just plugged in their computer and just played beats from their computer and sang along. There's probably four people who did that. And one of them was a person who rapped and they already had an audio track <clears throat> that was on what they recorded. And they were just, it, it was kind of like a rap karaoke. Even if he wrote it all himself, it seemed kind of silly to me. Um, and one guy had really nice music on his laptop. What if we try this? I don't want her left arm to get in the way of this lady's face. Although I could just put it behind her head if need be. really really struggling but that's okay yeah i've found the past few days just concentration has been so hard for me harder than usual my concentration is pretty adhd rough as it is I 
guess this is kind of a hard angle. What if we do this? Uh, but does it work? This is the dementia image I mentioned last week. I still don't know the origin. Okay. Is that something you're going to post in the Discord? Stream announcement. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, interesting. But yes, I do recall you talking about that. I uh, briefly volunteered at a veteran's home. Or you can post the link in the chat. Either or. I, I can't remember... I think I cranked up the uh, the auto mod so people couldn't randomly post links. So that might be why there are stars if you tried to post a link. Yeah, I guess the, the link was eaten because all I'm seeing, seeing is three stars. And I don't know. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at this. So I need to give the viewer the simulated experience of having a stroke. Okay, yeah, I can kind of see what you were talking about where it's almost recognizable shapes, but if you get, if you look at it closely, you can't really tell what these things are. Why won't you? Okay. Can't quite recognize it. Yeah, that's. I don't think I've seen this picture before, but I've seen pictures like this. They're very frustrating to look at. <laughs> the description says it's designed to give the viewer blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't say how it was designed. And this was four years ago, so it probably wasn't AI. Hmm. But yeah, that's kind of interesting. I uh, very briefly volunteered at a veteran's home. And... Basically, I was just there to just hang out with people who lived there and just like chat with them, keep them company and play games with them. This was right just as like people were getting fully vaccinated and they were very, very tight with testing and uh, And rightfully so, just trying to protect the residents. So that was kind of intimidating and why I eventually stopped. And they had like nurses in like full astronaut suits with their own oxygen. Just... Tube. Whoops. Oxygen, and they were all like in case because they were just being so careful about that. But anyway, the point is, when I briefly volunteered there, I was uh, 
one time I played Uno with a woman who had dementia, uh, an elderly lady. And I, I really, I was channeling a friend of mine who was just from the board game group that, uh, oops, that I would go to. And there was just one guy in particular who was just always super patient teaching people games and just being super friendly and nice to newcomers and whatnot. And so I played Uno with this lady, but he couldn't remember things. She couldn't remember the rules. But, like, she knew enough that she kind of remembered the game, but then she would forget this and forget that and, and so on and so forth. Simulated dementia, the caretaker. Ah. Uh, hmm. It's kind of in, in intriguing in a way, the way that... Uh, Human brains are just fragile and, and subject to degradation. But yeah, I was just like, and I had to be careful with this lady because I would just like, like draw four just completely baffled her. So I just pretended the draw four card was the number four. Because she just could not comprehend that. And I, she started to get suspicious that I was letting her win, which, I mean, all of the rules were out the window. So winning was completely arbitrary. So I had to like mix it up a little bit, just enough. So I would win sometimes. I, I don't even want hands in this stupid picture why am i doing this to myself but that was i don't know and after i had done it there was a uh, somebody who worked at a desk there who said that i did a really good job and so that that was kind of nice that i could do that maybe feel a little better about interacting with people one-on-one -on -one. Yeah, 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 this sucks. I need to ease up on that. Um, and like she would forget what was what, and I would look at her hand and say, Oh, you can do this, and you can do that, and blah, blah, blah. And that was something I really wish I had been able to stick with that more. I think I did like. Once a week for six weeks, I did that. And I ended up uh, at a basketball game outside of it. I ended up sitting next to somebody who the next day tested positive for COVID. And this was when he was vaccinated and I was vaccinated. But the veterans home, they did not want to take any risks. And they told me to stay away for two weeks. And I never tested positive, and but they just were so strict about it. I really felt like it just wasn't fair to me, me going out in the world and, and taking risks and then putting people in the veterans home at risk. It just felt. All right. I don't have a good reference for torso, but that's okay. This is where going to start getting wonky. <laughs> it was. People get uncomfortable around dementia patients, which is understandable, but people are still social creatures. Yeah, I think the biggest issue and what they wanted volunteers for was the veterans were just lonely. Even the people with dementia, you know, they just wanted somebody to hang out with. And uh, also while I was there, I played checkers with a 90 year old guy 
many times and he destroyed me. He uh, kicked my ass every single time. And that guy was really cool. He, uh, what am I looking for? Why? Oh, there it is. Um, he like worked for GE and he knew all about machine and, and electronic equipment and stuff and taking stuff apart. He was cool to talk to. But I did want to show you, viewers, I, I know I don't have the skill to execute this, but I kind of wanted to do something in the vein of Virgil Finlay. Virgil Finlay? Finlay? He, uh, he was a pulp book artist it, from like, you know, exciting adventures and amazing stories and shit uh, from the probably the 40s even. He was absolutely amazing. Maybe the best ever at that. And I kind of wanted to do something along the lines of like you can see all these sort of radiating lines, even making faces and stuff. And, but he just had all this amazing detail and all this pointillism and cross hatching and stuff. And so he like these orbs of energy and shit. So I wanted to try this. I like the effect of that could be like transporter. There's an artist who did a really crazy Frankenstein that looked like engravings. You're not talking about Bernie Wrightson, are you? Because Bernie Wrightson did a this amazing illustrated Frankenstein book. Probably the best Frankenstein illustrations ever by a human. Yeah, Bernie Wrightson's amazing was an amazing artist but for this weird teleport stupid teleporter thing that i'm going to try to do i really wanted to try to get a virgil finley vibe i won't be able to do all this cross hatching and line details but maybe i can take it i don't know see this is kind of like the teleporter vibe that I was thinking of, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm not talented enough to do that, but maybe I can just get the vibe of it. Oh, I have a headache. Why do I have a headache? I've been trying to drink water. My headaches. All right, let's. I'm going to have to completely redo, redo that face, but it's the expression and the angle that I wanted. So let's move on to Lady B. Although I, I still think that she could be even more expressive. I'm going to give her sparkly eyeshadow like in the... Uh, in the movie Showgirls. Like even just this reference photo here, Elizabeth Shue just has this blank look and these dead eyes. And she's kind of like that through the whole movie. And I think it's just very funny. Bernie Wrightson, yes. I don't have Swamp Thing comics. Yep, that's where he, he's shown. I think that are also him, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he did Swamp Thing with Alan Moore, I believe. And just absolutely amazing artist. Did a lot of horror comics and horror covers. Super, super cool artist. Now, maybe she should be. We're going to take that down. Bring that up. Maybe not that much.
Uh, how about Oops. Oh, let's get some reference photos ready. But Virgil Finlay, amazing pulp artist. Just that might be more of outfits. I was kind of encouraged by the uh, looking back at the video of when I was working on the uh, Lilia Forever picture and the initial face that I drew for her was dog shit. But the final picture is, it's still not great, but it's... Uh, It conveyed what I wanted it to, and I ju it just took a lot of work. And so, starting out here, being pretty unsatisfied with this face, but I feel like, okay, I can fix it. I've done it before. I can do it again. Why? There we go. Uh, something like that. I think in the past two or three years, uh, one of the pieces of original art of Bernie Wrightson's Frankenstein sold for a million dollars, I want to say, is like record breaking for that kind of illustration ever read the instruction books from the famous artist school i have not i'm not familiar with that i should screenshot that I think these heads are too far apart, but we'll see. Probably make those arms thinner, maybe. I did read Salvador Dali has a book about uh, how to be an artist. And it's bonkers, and it's great. It was mail order art course for commercial illustrators in the 50s. I think Jack Ham and Rockwell were instructors. That sounds cool. An artist of that era that I didn't even know about until maybe five or six years ago was Lion Decker. Lion Decker? Uh, and he is just fantastic artist. Uh, he did a lot of, was it Saturday evening posts that Norman Rockwell did all the uh, covers for? Whoops. But the Salvador Dali instruction book is just, it has a lot of weird things. Like, I remember something about 
in order to be a great artist. You need to wake up before the sun rises and go out into a field and look at the way the dew uh, on the grass uh, warps the things around it. Uh, and study that. That was the kind of writing and the kind of instruction in his 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 book. And I remember something about how extremely important it was to have a long curly mustache because uh, something about it would catch moisture in the air. And so it wouldn't land on your painting or just some really nonsensical reason like that. This also looks quite mannish because I don't know how to things well. I can't draw the poop. Lion Decker. So fabulous. He had just incredible taste and was meticulous too. He painted every one of his paintings twice. I didn't know that. Rockwell was a kind of fanboy of his and tried to get close to him. Leindecker's brother, JX, taken in by Rockwell when he was dying. I know, I didn't know he had a brother. I also, I read somewhere that Leindecker was a closeted homosexual and dealing with that in that that era of America, of the world, I just would not wish that on anybody. Just the, the, I don't know. I know it affected his life personally and made things very difficult for him. And that made me feel bad, but he's just a fantastic artist. Let her see this lady over here. She's happy. And this lady over here, she's just not even grumpy, just dead to the world. Neutral. I didn't know that Lion Decker painted. I can, I can kind of appreciate that. Sometimes I draw things, and. I feel like I should give it another go, give it another shot, because I didn't quite nail it. But I know I don't have the patience for that. Oh, also, I did go. Saturday, there was a local art exhibit that I went to that was pretty nifty. Just a lot of local artists. It's a warehouse. I've been there before during the Tucson Fringe Festival. I saw a show there and that was the place. It just, it looked like it was just as close to being an uninhabited factory as you can get without actually being an uninhabited factory. The Bando place, like that too. You went to school at New York Artist League and they taught all about iteration before doing an illustration. Yeah, I find that kind of fascinating. I've seen like Rockwell, I don't want to call them roughs, but just stuff it looks like completed illustrations I find that very fascinating I'm not quite sure what bando is maybe that's a typo but yeah sort of the grimy place with dust all over it but this time it was just artists an artist collective that's what it's initially it's just got a bunch of studios that artists use um 
and I ended up talking for about 10 minutes with this nice lady who did uh, portraits. And she just, she seemed really happy that her day job was just doing portraits. And she said she didn't even show her work until she was 50. And that was kind of inspiring. Just sort of the, the later in life dream. She was a very nice lady. And I wish I had talked to more people, but I kind of felt like I used up my social energy talking to that one lady. That Nick, man. Probably if I draw the body, that won't help. This is okayish. The expression very flat. This is a good base for what I want. Save. Oh, why does my head hurt? I don't want my head to hurt. Maybe some eye drops will help. Maybe. Pardon me. But that uh, art gallery thing is something that happens once a month. It's like first. Saturday art walk or something like that. So I'll probably go to that again in the future. Hi, hello there, Alex. Thank you for stopping by. I'm working on a very silly picture that is, oh yeah, I wanted to start a body. Ain't no way I'm gonna put this body down. What's your drawing about? Well, it's very, very rough at this point, but it is, the concept is a woman who has been in a teleporter and split into two different women. Like I said, extremely, extremely rough at this point. I'm just getting sort of the, the figures and the poses down before I work on the weird teleporter stuff. But that's all you need to know for now. Very, very explicit name, Zach. Yes. And it's even even more so than uh, than it appears on the surface. I wonder how the idea came. Well, it's such a stupid idea. It's uh, man, I just explained this, but I guess I can explain it again if you really want to know. Basically, I saw two movies, and one of the movies was the actress was extremely manic, very angry and sad and happy, and not a whole lot of discipline, pretty bad. And I saw another movie where the actress was very deadpan, not a whole lot of expression, very... Uh, very sort of lifeless and it just the idea popped into my head that maybe it was initially one actress who was in a teleporter accident and one of split into two people one of which got all the emotion and craziness and the other one which just was not able to express emotion and 
So, so that's where the wacky idea came from. I don't really think I have the skill to pull this off, but it should be funny. It should be silly. And both movies that I saw took place in Vegas and both actress, actress, both actresses first names were Elizabeth, although one spelled it with an S and one spelled it with a Z. Uh, so that's the whole elaborate. So see, it's even more explicit and even more exact than you thought it's and I do really didn't want to draw it because I just don't think I have the skill and patience to do it well but I'm not really doing anything else I might as well some thinking behind the sketch yeah a lot of overthinking I'm very good at overthinking all right she's just gonna be Both of these women are way too goddamn skinny. <laughs> and this is very, very early in the process. I gotta redo the faces and the bodies and add all kinds of sparkly effects for the make it look like a transporter stuff like that hmm. i'm not quite sure what i want her arms to be doing not as exuberant as the other lady just kind of hanging down Ugh. not too zombie just It would be interesting if I could have it kind of wrap around on the... Oh, what's that? There we go. Wrap around on the other lady, but... Oh, and also, both of these movies that I saw came out in 1995. I do, lately, the past... 10 months or so i've been doing a lot of scenes from movies i like to write about movies also and sometimes i'll get a little wonky go beyond just the movie scene and try to do something a little more creative now she is wearing a black skirt and I definitely yeah let's try shoulders um let's see. Oops, not quite dipping so much. Is that better? I don't know. So it says, oh yeah, it's just wearing a, a black. This lady's larger than the other lady, and I need to shrink her a bit, but not right at this moment. Boom. I probably just 
this the torso also is going to be kind of blended in i put two of the salvaged lion nectar practice paintings in the discord let's look at the discord you have seen them already he asked them to be burned when he died good lord it's just so cool he's so good here i will show the rest of the class here we were talking about this illustrator from the 40s and 50s maybe lion decker just an amazing artist and as the doctor said this is uh he would often paint things twice do a lot of practice just he always had this the way of bolded clothes that just looks so dynamic just so striking I can understand I can appreciate the idea of just disliking your work or not wanting people to see the rough version and wanting to have it burned but when you're as talented as Lion Decker was it's really it makes me wonder how much he did destroy because I feel my work I mean obviously I I'm just a hobbyist and don't have that kind of skill I don't really care much what happens to my stuff why is that doing that stop it the uh lead the vocalist for rage against the machine zach de la roche de la roche he uh i kind of like that maybe i can tilt her a bit he had a father that was an artist and during some manic episode or when he was drunk or something he just took all of his paintings and burned all of them and that apparently had a quite of an effect on young zach <laughs> he did maybe 200 paintings for the post that sounds about right Imagine that Rockwell did one less painting than Lion Decker as an as act of respect. So maybe a hundred pack his paintings were burned. And that is a shame. Probably those would fetch a lot of money today for our collectors. They'd probably gobble that up. I don't know. There's just something about that era of illustration of the 40s and 50s that I just really like like the pinup illustrations of that era and the pulp uh magazine sci-fi and fantasy of that era like the Virgil Finlay that I was showing it just really speaks to me and I mean you have to bear in mind the uh try to look past a little bit like just some of the tropes and the misogyny and <clears throat> all of that shit but hmm I don't I want their heads to be close together but it makes their bodies collide more than I would like um I'm not quite sure how to resolve that
I should have done that in the dark. How about... There we go. That helps. Hmm, I don't know. Why are you doing this to me? Why do you hate me so much? Stupid transform. Um, if I rotate, rotate them both. people want out of commercial illustration has changed drastically my interest goes from golden age illustrations and then to alt 60s 70s guys like crumb and williams things currently feel very corporate however crumb was very creative he was i don't know if you've seen the documentary about him i think it was just called crumb he just had a very very sad family Um, it was kind of a bummer to watch. If I do that, and then is that too much? I don't know. I don't want it to look like there's four boobs just lined up next to each other, but let's see what we can do. It probably, there was probably also a lot of illustration from those eras that we like. Uh, a lot of garbage illustration, terrible stuff that just didn't persist so that we see them today. The really cool stuff is the stuff that people held on to and share today and, uh, There was probably a lot that was just stinky, but today we see all of it and it gives the illusion that things were better back then. That's my theory anyway. I hope I actually just got the Spider-Verse art book recently, which is full current day masters. Well, that's cool. Yeah, most of the artists, most of my Instagram is just artists and most of them are comic artists. And it's pretty much the only thing I'm really interested in looking at on Instagram. Now, I should the legs. This is going to have to do, and because I wanted to do it in black and white, because I feel like doing it in color is just going to add at least another two hours to it. And I want to keep it more reasonable. I kind of roughly have a deadline of a week. I give myself about a week to do these kinds of bigger, elaborate things. That helps me to focus a bit on getting the overall thing done instead of hyper-focusing on a few things. Anyway, I forget what my point was. So who would you call a current day master? I've kind of been out of the loop. 
because I just don't read comics anymore. Quite sure how abstract I want the bottom, the bottom to be, the lower half to be. What if? We'll just start here. I remember when Alex Ross started doing Marvel, well, not Marvel, but just started doing comics like Marvels and Kingdom Come, and everybody was just drooling over how gorgeous all of his work was. I think it was in contrast to your average comic book, and this was really before digital coloring came into its own. And people just absolutely loved Alex Ross. Looking at Alex Ross now, I find his work to be... Eh... Uh, kind of uninspiring just kind of basic he doesn't bring a lot to the table but it's executed well but at the time when marvels and kingdom come came out it was uh i remember reading wizard magazine and they just could not get enough alex ross Let's try a different approach. What's this? Got some hips. That kind of connects to both of them. I think. I kind of want to stretch and squish both of them to make this fit better, but. I'm not going to worry about that right this second. Shane and Kim, when it comes to animation designs, that's on Duo. Glacius is also pretty great. I wonder, you've shown me a lot of artwork before. You may have shown me these artists, but I don't recall them off the top of my head. Let's investigate. Oh, yeah. Looking at Shine Kim art. Pretty cool. Who's the other one? Uh, I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, these are both very expressive artists. And that's something I feel like I struggle with, is having a lot of energy and expression with, like, body language and stuff. I just try to... This sort of current day golden standard. I just never stop talking about it. It's almost a trope. Yes, yeah, Spider-Verse was... Interesting creature. I thought the second movie was awful, 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 but visually, definitely just a lot going on, a lot of different genres, a lot of... I did watch a bit of the Corridor animators react on YouTube, and they talked a bit about Spider-Verse and some of the different stuff that they did. 
this is all right here's how we're gonna figure this out see that does not quite fit and that fits a little bit better but not great let's there are some hips first and I'll probably draw like little sparklies and lines and stuff to make the split more sci-fi. I really, really, really hated spider punk a lot. And like in the movie, they just kept talking about how cool he was. And I've seen a lot of fan art of spider punk. And it just felt so fucking corporate absorbing counterculture and turning it into culture. And it just, it just left this really awful taste in my mouth. And just one of the biggest uh, I don't know if they're the biggest company but definitely one of the biggest uh, entertainment companies on the planet trying to express rebellion by grabbing punk tropes I don't know it just really found it very insulting I think I just need to move her but let's try but that's just uh, me overthinking of course heard of over the garden wall I have that was really good I saw over the garden wall Yeah, that was that was really good and the style of it, especially the colors, the very muted colors was very cool. And there was first I watched the show Infinity Train, which had a very similar format. And I think Over the Garden Wall came first. But uh even though I think they were fairly distinct in different shows. Definitely felt like one was heavily influenced by the other, Infinity Train. But yeah, Over the Garden Wall looked pretty great. I have seen that. What if... I, I'm definitely... My attention span is... Drifting like that. I think this actress is also much taller than the other actress, so I'm gonna have to fudge that a lot. Um Something like this. Maybe just kind of I want to call it an octopusy stance. Just legs. I'm a splayed. The uh, let's see, the crop is probably gonna be something like this. Roughly.
this is I don't know if I could do this, but don't have much else going on. Yeah, I think I just need to redraw her torso to make that work. It'll be fine. It doesn't need to be exact because it's going to be like sparklies and lines and shit. All right, my head is starting to hurt quite a bit. I don't know what I need. Probably just drink, just water. But I am going to call it a stream. Hour and a half, that's not bad. Thank you, anybody stopping by. Thank you for watching. It's very nice of you. Thank you uh, for hanging out. And I've been uploading all of these to YouTube if anybody wants to watch the whole boring thing from start to finish. I don't know if I have a link to the YouTube pan page anywhere, but... Well, um. As of 2024, I should say, I've been uploading all of them. All right. Good morning to you as well. Thank you for watching. For everybody else, thank you for not watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.